Most people think financial risk is a bad thing, but on Wall Street, it's actually a good thing because risk equals money, especially if you can keep the profits and give the losses to someone else. In a succinct new book, Financial Origami, Brendan Moynihan explains how bankers manufactured the risks that led to the financial crisis. Brendan spent 20 years working in the financial industry. He's now an editor-at-large at Bloomberg News. Welcome, Brendan. Thank you. So can you explain why it is that most of us think risk is a bad thing, but bankers actually like risk? Well, yes. I mean, the only way to make money at all is to take some measure of risk, some degree of it. And uh, for Wall Street, uh, taking a look at 40 years, they migrated through three stages. They went from being agents of risk transfer, where they basically matched up buyers and sellers for stocks or bonds or whatever. That was in the 60s and the 70s. And in the 1980s and, and 90s, they became what are called principles of risk, where they literally stood on the other side of the transaction. If someone wanted to buy, they'd be willing to sell and vice versa. In the early 2000s, um, the risk environment became very low. There was not a lot of risk in the environment, very low interest rates and things were very calm. And so they had an incentive to literally manufacture risk, create risk so that they'd had a product to sell to, to investors. What would be an example of one of those risky products? Well, credit default swaps are you know, the big name. Um, and as, as I say in financial origami, none of these products are quote unquote new. They, Wall Street basically has three financial products. They have stocks, they have bonds and they have some sort of insurance product. And credit default swaps were a type of insurance product. And that's one where um, oh, at a certain point, once they created more credit default swaps than there actually was debt outstanding to insure, that was the point at which they were manufacturing risk. So you use an analogy in your book that I really like. You compare certain products on Wall Street to fire insurance on my own house. So naturally, I have fire insurance, but you say it goes farther than that. Yes, um, the metaphor is designed to give people a way to understand what happened on Wall Street. You have fire insurance on your own house, but if 10 of your neighbors go out and buy a fire insurance policy on your house, that's effectively what was going on on Wall Street. There was 10 times the amount of risk that was absolutely necessary to insure just that one house. It's also a questionable incentive. I mean, I'd be a little nervous knowing that 10 people would get a check if my house burned down. Yeah, and um, there's some questions on Wall Street as to whether somebody might have ac accidentally or intentionally lit the fire on some of the firms to, to bring them down. So why is this even legal? <laughs> well, um, there'll be a question as to whether these credit default swaps are going to be regulated as insurance products. They're not right now because technically they're not insurance products. They're technically a, technically a series of option contracts that gives people the ability to protect themselves if the bond price goes down. So far, they've, they've not been regulated at all. They're not going to be banned entirely, I don't think, um, but there's probably going to be some tighter regulation and some sort of measure that prevents there being more credit default swaps outstanding than there is actual number of bonds. So every morning on CNBC, I hear that financial innovation is the heart of capitalism. But you call financial engineering or financial innovation financial origami. Can you explain why? Yes. I mean, innovation and engineering are big words and tend to confuse people. And I think it's very simplistic. Wall Street has three pieces of paper that they offer to the public, stocks, bonds, and some sort of insurance product. And basically, they just refold attributes of those three pieces of paper into new and improved products with higher prices to sell to investors. Is there anything that Congress should do, could do, to try to tamp down the risk? Well, the, the risk is going to be there. I don't know that they're necessarily going to be able to uh, uh, push it out of the system entirely. Um, and again, it's not a bad thing. It's just a matter of you know, how is it used and is there more of it than is, than is absolutely necessary. One thing that Congress can do and, uh, and has at least started to with the Dodd-Frank Act is to bring uh, brokers under the same regulatory standard as registered investment advisors. There's already a law in the books. They don't need to create a new law. They just need to extend the law uh, to, uh, to salesmen. And in that case, that makes those people fiduciaries. They literally have to act in the best interest of the client rather than the firm. So until that becomes the rule of the land, what can investors do to protect themselves? Should they only hire fiduciaries? Well, um, I mean, I don't want to be giving advice one way or the other, but I think that it's important for people to understand that there is another way of doing business out there. Most people, there was a survey done about 18 months ago, 76% of the people surveyed thought that their stockbrokers were fiduciaries, and they're not. They're only supposed to sell something that is quote unquote suitable for the investor. But a registered investment advisor is literally a fiduciary and has to act in the customer's best interest. So you're not going to say it, but I think we can say it, which is that a fiduciary really is the one that people ought to be looking at hiring, especially if they're not sophisticated investors. Yes, it's an unconflicted model. They don't get paid on commissions. They get paid a fee to provide advice. And in that, uh, they have to provide the best advice for you as an individual. Well, thanks very much for your advice, Brendan. Great to have you here. And thank you for watching.